Welcome, GDLers, to another edition of Scripting Adventure. This is Bruce from Barking Dog Bim, and today we're going to continue developing the simple desk we've been working on. In the last video, we learnt how to limit parameter inputs and create selection lists using the values and the values to statements. In this video, we're going to develop the geometries for the different selection options and explore some additional status codes. Let's get scripting. So let's open our object by selecting it and using this button here. You can also go File, Libraries and Objects, Open Object. Pay attention to the shortcut. We'll restore down with this button here. And we'll just tidy up the script a little bit before we get going. So I'll open my 3D script beside it. And the options we're going to be putting in for the desktop should go in the desktop subroutine. We've created our conditional statements in the 2D in the last video. So we'll just cut and paste them over here. And get rid of our text. Get rid of our text here as well. Turn on our project2 command and comment out our poly2 command. Let's give some indents to these. Now the first option will be desktop D type square, which is what we've done here. So we'll just copy that into there, shift that into there, indent it. Let's just recap what this means before I explain the other two. First option is when desktop type equals D type square. When I'm figuring out my geometry, the first step is to sketch the shape I'm trying to achieve. I just do this on a piece of paper with a pen, old school, right? Now this is a very simple shape, which you could probably work out in your head, but the principle is the same for more complex geometries. If you're just starting out, I recommend using this approach until you get more practiced with scripting. So after I've sketched out my shape, I then indicate where I want my zero, zero point to be, like so. I then sketch the orientation of my axes and identify which is X and which is Y. Again, in this case, it's quite simple as it aligns with the global coordinate system, but you do get more complex objects where the axes might be rotated or mirrored or both. So sketching this orientation is an important step. But for this desktop, the axes will be oriented as shown. I then work out the order in which I'm going to declare my coordinate points. So this is point one, and two, three, and four. I've gone clockwise in this case, but anti-clockwise is just as valid, and sometimes more so. This then gives me the number of coordinate lines I'll have in my prism statement. Then finally, I work out what those coordinates are going to be. Remembering, we list our X coordinates first, then our Y. For this one, as we've already coded, but just as a recap, keeping in mind that this side is our A parameter, and this side is our B parameter, our coordinates will be line 1, X of 0, Y of 0. Line 2 will be X of 0, Y of B, line 3, X of A, Y coordinate of B, and finally line 4, X of A, Y of 0. So our final prism statement requires an N and an H, which is the number of coordinate lines and an extrusion height, so that will be 4 and desktop thickness. And it also requires a status code for each coordinate line. For this shape, we want the face and all edges, which, according to our diagram, is status code 15. So if we look at our final script, this is what we have. With that technique in place, let's look at the other two desktop options. We'll look at option 3 next, just because it's the simpler geometry. So desktop type equals D-type chamfered. The first step is to sketch out our shape. So this is what it's going to look like. Then we identify our zero, zero point here 
you'll notice this time it doesn't actually fall on any of the geometry, which is fine. Then we sketch the orientation of our axes and identify which is the X and which is the Y. Then we number our points, one through to eight this time. Next, we work out the coordinates. We've got our A parameter side and our B parameter side, and we're going to need a parameter or a variable for the size of our chamfer. Now, because we're also going to be doing a rounded option, and we'll use the same variable for the size of the rounding. We'll name this corner R for radius. So our coordinate lines will be one is going to be zero in the X axis and corner R in the Y axis. Line two will be zero in the X. B minus corner R in the Y. Three will be corner R in the X and B in the Y. Four will be A minus corner R in the X and B in the Y. You get the point. So we just complete the remainder of our coordinate lines. So there's our eight coordinate lines. Our prism statement requires an N and an H, N being the number of coordinate lines and H being the height of the extrusion. So this will be 8 and desktop thick. We also need our status codes for each line. And because we want all corners visible given their sharp edges, the status code of 15 is what we want. So this is our final prism statement. Let's put it in the script. First thing I'll do is in the master script, create my corner R variable, and I'll make that 80 mil. And let's have a look at our 3D. The last option is D-type rounded. So again, on a piece of paper, we sketch out our geometry. We identify point zero zero and determine our axis orientation and the X and the Y axes. Then we number our points. As per the chamfered option, we'll have points one through eight. However, with this rounded option, we will also need to define the last corner curve, which means a ninth point to finish. Understand the parameters we're working with, A and B, and we have our corner R variable for the corner radius. Again, we define our coordinates. Now the coordinates will be the same as our chamfered option, so coordinate lines 1 through 8 will have the same X and Y values. And our ninth point will match our first point. The difference lies in our status codes. Now with all 15s, there will be straight edges. But we want to curve each corner. So let's have a look at our additional status codes to see what option will best suit our needs. Status codes has its own heading and we want additional status codes. So let's have a look, what do we want? There's a bunch of options here to use status codes with your polylines or your prism outlines. And what we want is this one here, tangential arc to endpoint. And we can see that it's 1000 is the status code, 1000 plus our status. This is very similar to your polyline pet palette option. So if I just demonstrate that by drawing a polyline, by just imagine that this is the first edge of our desktop, we'll click there and we choose this option here on our pet palette, arc tangential to previous segment. We can see that that now is drawing an arc tangential. So if I was to click at 45, Go to straight, click again, and so on. I could also use 2000, which is tangential arc by radius and angle. I could use 3000, which is arc using a center point and point on the final axis. Or I could use 4000, arc using center point and an angle. 
all valid options, but the 1000 is the simplest to code in this situation. It's also worth noting that arcs using center points will draw in the anti-clockwise direction, not the clockwise direction. So I'd have to plot my desktop coordinates in an anti-clockwise direction. Otherwise, I'd get this result, which is clearly not what we're after. So additional status code 1000 is what we'll use. Now in order for a tangential arc to be calculated, you need to be coming off the end of a line already drawn. So same as in Archicad, if I start my polyline, my tangential option is not available until I define my first vector. Now it's available for choice. This is why I've put point one where I have. So the first line can be drawn and the tangential arc can then be calculated. So our straight points will be 1, 2, 4, 6 and 8. They keep the status code of 15. And our curved lines will terminate at points 3, 5, 7 and 9. And they get a 1000 added to them, like so. Another way to write these codes is as a single number. That's as equally as valid as that. Now, if I leave these status codes like this, we'll get lines at every facet of the curve, which is not what we want. We want a smooth curve that still shows an edge when viewed in elevation. In a previous video, I showed how to achieve this by using the status code of 64, like so. Then we have our prism statement with nine coordinate lines and desktop thick as our extrusion height. So this is our final statement. Let's put it into our script. What I just need to do is put my transform up the top here, got my delete down the bottom, and let's have a look at our 3D. Put it on square, check our 3D view. There's our square option, that's good. Rounded, that's working, and chamfered. There we go. So I'll just save the object, have a look in plan. There they all are. You'll notice here the segmentation around the curved corner. And you'll see that this is because it's a project two command. So if I change this resolution down to eight, you can see it changed there. So this is why we use a 2D script. So you get that nice smooth representation in 2D. So I'll just change this back to 16. And let's have a look at our work in 3D. There are our desktop options generating the way we want. Because this is a simple object, you get away with putting the geometry in each conditional statement. It's quite easy to do. However, it's not best practice. Best practice is to load those coordinate lines into temporary memory and then have the one geometry statement at the end. And I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you give it a go yourself. See you in the next one.